I'd almost given up on love. After five years of pointless scrolling, it was time to face the facts. Girls just weren't interested in nice guys like me. But then a notification popped up one morning. It's a match. Irene had soft eyes and curling brown hair that fell about her shoulders. Her smile was shy, with a hint of mischief. I thought long and hard about my opening line. I had to both strike the proper tone and make her feel special. Hi, you seem interesting. Like someone I'd like to know better. Not like all the other girls on here. She replied a few minutes later. That's so sweet of you to say. You seem pretty interesting yourself. Smiley face. Do you live alone? After a flirtatious back and forth, I asked her out to dinner. I'd love to, but I'm working late. I'll be so hungry when my shift ends. If only I knew a handsome gentleman who could cook. Winky face. I waited for almost a full minute before replying so as not to appear desperate. Why don't you come over to my place tonight? I'm a great cook. Irene replied, Sounds good. X. Boom. Just like that, I had a date. I bought a mop and vacuum to clean the apartment with and lit a few candles to set the mood. Irene messaged at about 10pm. I'm outside. She was early. There is no time for a shower, and I couldn't find a single can of deodorant. Luckily, I bathed three days earlier. Crisis averted. I put on the Avatar The Last Airbender original soundtrack, then dimmed the lights. I made my way to the front door, stopped at the mirror to straighten my tie, then turned the handle. Whenever I saw Irene, my heart skipped a beat. Her grey-green eyes glimmered like emeralds, and her intoxicating aroma reminded me of a freshly opened pack of Pokemon cards. She was wrapped in multiple layers of clothing, barely showing any skin at all. A rare virtue in a western woman. Aren't you going to invite me in? She said eventually. Her voice was confident, yet somehow submissive. I swept a hand across the apartment and tipped my fedora. My lady. Irene kept her coat on as I guided her towards the dining room. She took a seat at my secret Lab Omega 2020 series gaming chair while I sat facing her on a wooden one the previous owners left behind when they moved out. I asked Irene about her work, her family, and her sexual history. She gave short, curt answers to all of my questions. Periodically, her stomach grumbled. It was rather unladylike, although I held my tongue. She surveyed the room. Are we alone? Yup. I smiled. It's just the two of us. Her eyes focused on mine. Perfect. The way she said it sent my heart rate soaring. At one point, I excused myself to begin preparing the meal. Then we resumed chatting. As we talked, Irene propped her head up using her arm and leaned forward, seductively. What's that thing? With a gloved hand, she gestured past my left shoulder, towards a katana mounted across the wall. Oh, that's... It's a Japanese sword, crafted by a master smith in Yokohama. I turn back towards her. If you're lucky, perhaps I'll give you a little demonstration later. A few minutes later, right as I was in the middle of explaining Jordan Peterson's 12 rules for life, the microwave dinged. Excuse me. I served Irene's portion first, bowing as I laid it before her. Bon Appetit. The Hot Pockets turned out sweet and delectable. A thick celebration of cheese, meat, and vegetables. But while I scoffed mine down, Irene only eyed her plate with disdain. I swallowed a mouthful. Is everything okay? She bit her bottom lip and nodded as her stomach grumbled. Even louder than before. 
I shrugged and continued eating. By the time I was finished, she'd hardly taken a single bite. What's the matter? I asked, a tone of concern in my voice. She rubbed her belly. I'm not really in the mood for. Her voice trailed off as she prodded the hot pocket with her fork. I'm in the mood for something else. She stood, circled the computer desk, and gently pressed a finger against my lips. Before I knew it, we were kissing. Irene swung over onto my lap. Our tongues acted in perfect synchronization, like Goku and Vegeta performing the fusion dance. Anticipation swelled beneath my cargo shorts. I'd been looking forward to this moment for 36 years. Irene bit my bottom lip, hard. I grimaced with pain and pulled back. Then a trickle of blood ran down my chin. She gave me a nasty smile, showing a mouthful of curved teeth, and licked her lips with a forked tongue. Mmm, you taste good. Irene stood and began undressing. For a moment, it appeared as though things were looking up. Although her monstrous teeth were repulsive, I still considered Irene attractive. But then, before my horrified eyes, her clothes fell to the ground. From the neck down, Irene's body was covered with translucent skin, grotesquely colored, stretched taut over well-defined bones, bat-like wings spanning no less than thrice the width of her body expanded. Then she pulled off her gloves, revealing long, sharp claws. A set of small, yet perfectly shaped breasts sat proudly atop her chest. My knees trembled as Irene leaned in close. Before I could react, her cold claw wrapped around my neck and lifted me from my chair, pinning me against the wall. I made a faint rasp and tried to pry her fingers off my neck. Irene's tongue probed my face as she moaned with what I assumed to be feminine delight. The edge of my vision blurred, and my temples started throbbing. Desperately, I felt along the wall, probing for something, anything, that could help. My left hand touched something metal, the katana. In one smooth motion, I grabbed it off the wall and angled it downward. The sheath fell to the floor. Irene's jaw closed around my neck, puncturing the flesh. I screamed, then twisted the blade around and thrust it into her back, right between the shoulder blades. She made a sudden cry of pain and relinquished her grip. Irene whirled around, shrieking. The blade tore a strip of flesh as I ripped it out. Before I could strike a second time, Irene flapped her wings. The left one collided with my chest, knocking me clean across the table. The jolt of the impact made me groan. Red lines trickled down my neck, stemming from the point where Irene bit me. I scrambled back to my feet, katana in hand. Irene bared her fangs. The computer desk stood between us. Why you? She said with fury. Green blood blossomed from her back. I took several short, quick breaths. What the fuck is going on here? I stammered. Isn't it obvious? A horrible grin broke out on Irene's face. The end of the blade wobbled in my unsteady hand. She circled to my right. I turned to follow, keeping the desk between us. I'm here to eat you. I stalked dating sites for horny losers like you, and then I gobbled them up. Irene burst forward. A desperate flail of my blade sent her whining back. I gulped. Gobble up. Just what the hell are you? Explain yourself. Irene leaned forward. It doesn't matter what I am. All that matters is what you are. Oh. I said, then gulped. And what's that? She grinned. 
a fat 30 year old virgin who's about to be dinner. Like hell I'm about to be dinner, I shouted. I tried to slash, but Irene jerked back, just out of reach, and the silver blade cut only air. She took another swipe at me. I backed up a step. She swiped again and again, finding only the space above the desk. I held my breath and steadied my arms. All I had to do was watch my opponent for an opening. Each time Irene got ready to strike, her muscles tensed. That was it. The next time her muscles contracted, a delicate stroke sent her fingers flying through the air. She growled like a wounded orc and staggered back. While Irene clutched her hand and squealed, I slipped around the desk ready to deliver a finishing blow. Her eyes focused on me with murderous intent. With her uninjured hand, Irene lashed out, forcing me backward. I answered her attacks with strikes of my own, once, twice, a testing. There was a loud whoosh as Irene spread her wings and flew forward. No, I screamed, swinging wildly. The blade cut across her stomach. Anguished wails followed. Irene hit me with a meaty thump. Then we both spilled onto the floor. The katana landed between us. We both grabbed for it at the exact same moment. Me getting there first. I rose. Irene looked up at me, my blade poised, calm, and ready. Green liquid pumped out of the deep wound in her stomach. She clutched it with both hands, jaws clenched. She was defeated. We both knew it. Her strength was no match for my prowess. Those countless hours cutting open bottles of Mountain Dew in my mom's backyard had not been in vain. Irene stumbled to her feet. Glistening green blood and ribbons of taut flesh dangled from where my strikes had connected. I held the katana firm with both hands. Irene's wings collapsed into her back. Then she began pulling on her clothes. Still only half-dressed, she made her way towards the door. She looked back towards me with a look of utter disdain. I chuckled in response. The door crashed shut behind her. In the bathroom, I unrolled toilet paper and dabbed my wound. I stared at my reflection with pure disbelief. What were the odds my first ever date would turn out to be a hideous monster? It had undoubtedly been the second worst date of my entire life. On the counter, my phone chimed. It's a match. Excitement swelled in my stomach. The girl I matched with, Alice, was even more beautiful than Irene. Her skin was like mocha cappuccino. Very exotic. Very sexy. Sitting down to feast on the still warm hot pockets Irene had for gone, I sent Alice a message. Hi. You seem interesting. Like someone I'd like to know better. Not like all the other girls on here. If I'd known further terrors lay ahead, I would have uninstalled the app right then and there. But, like a fool, I didn't. After all, what were the odds of something like that happening again? Shout out to my super fans, Sweet Black Swan and Tacy. I really appreciate you guys supporting my channel and I look forward to creating more content for everyone.